to discover if a person has the genes for this condition. You can do it either with just a simple blood test or using a swab inside your cheek. That can show if someone has the genes that predispose them to storing too much iron. It won't tell you whether they will actually go on to develop iron overload because I think it's one of those great mysteries. There are many in medicine. Um, Not everybody that carries the genes will store excess iron. When someone is diagnosed, they are encouraged to let all their first-degree relatives know. That's a form of screening called cascade screening. So if you follow up with immediate family members, you'll probably pick up, or possibly pick up, some other people with the condition before they become unwell. I don't think the symptoms are good enough to diagnose haemochromatosis. They're vague symptoms which everybody has, so haemochromatosis really can only be diagnosed by the doctor by doing the correct medical procedures. So, Which is a blood test for starters? Simple. They don't have a blood test. I mean, while they're there, they can check all sorts of things. That's correct. Um, do the blood tests. If your iron levels are high, then they can go further and find out. And, and it's not so much that. Like, because it's hereditary, you know, don't you want to protect your children or your brothers and sisters? I think I was very lucky with my diagnosis because that was pretty much the first thing that they that they went to as soon as the that first test came back but we had to wait until we got multiple results that were high as I do because I'm a curious person I looked it up and of course I told my my family as well so my parents were also looking it up and together we were all looking into it and there was a lot of this we don't know if you actually have it or not because we had to wait for the genetic test to come back so there was a if you do have it it's not that bad because we've caught it, if, if you do have it, we've caught it this early. It wasn't as big and, big and scary as it could have been. Well, I learned a fair bit of it from the doctor when she was telling me about that I had it. She explained what it was, how to get it treated, everything like that. Well, I got a referral to a haematologist and um, he went into more detail with me about how it all works and stuff. But a lot of it still goes over my head, you know. <laughs> But yeah, I was also told that, you know, that, you know, if it gets too high, you can just die, you know. So I was, I guess, lucky that I got onto it when I did. When I was diagnosed with haemochromatosis, at first I thought, oh yeah, what does it do to you? Anyhow, they said, oh, you need to go and get tests done and checked. So next minute I'm going through scanners, machines and everything and then eventually give me a report and say, yeah, you've... Your liver's been, you've got cirrhosis of the liver. They said your other organs have been compromised as well because the iron deposits on your actual organs. Um, my one organ that wasn't affected was my heart. From there, they picked up a cancer tumour and it started getting worse because obviously haemochromatosis, it started basically causing problems to my body. Um, irreversible problems as it is. Had he have not had that iron deposit on his liver... Um, then possibly he would not have had the cirrhosis and he wouldn't have developed the cancer. I do know that I wasn't given any information to take home and read. I wasn't given any advice as to where I could get more information about this. I did have to go home. Well, rather, I did go home and Google. Now, I was studying at the time at university and so I was sort of... I was quite happy to do my own bit of research, but I think... It's not always wise to consult Dr Google. You can find all sorts of information on there that isn't helpful. So I would have actually preferred to have been given some written information to take home and have a look at.